Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and today we have part two in my Fallout Combat Armor series. In today's video, I'm gonna show you what it takes to paint foam to make it look like rusty, weathered, post-apocalyptic metal. And the thing that's great about this particular tutorial is you don't even have to be making this armor set to utilize some of these tips and tricks in your future builds. Now, you guys know me, I love painting. I love painting in my layers lots and lots of layers. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all the layers that I put into this, as well as the textures for the rust, plus some brand new spray paints that are coming to the US that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. So let's go ahead and jump into this build because I wanna show you what it takes to paint foam to look like metal. In part one, I showed step-by-step step how to put together this Fallout combat armor, and now it's time to prime and paint. To prime the foam surface, I'm gonna apply three light coats of Plasti Dip. I make sure to apply the Plasti Dip light so I don't obscure all the details that I had embossed into the surface with the tin foil. A very light dusting of Krylon Red Oxide Primer is now sprayed onto the surface and the straps. After that had cured, I sprayed on some Krylon Camouflage Ultra Flat Green onto the armor. Now notice with all these layers, it's just a dusting of the paint to prevent cracking. Now I can combine some Liquitex Chromium Oxide Green, Turner's Yellow, and a little bit of Unbleached Titanium. This mixture is going to be watered down and applied to the surface using a 1 inch mop brush. Once the paint had been applied, I go back in with a damp paper towel and blot away some of the pigment. What this thin layer of paint is doing is prepping the surface for additional layers of acrylic. Now one thing I'm going to say is that this paint job is going to require a lot of layers, and by blotting the paint, additional under layers can show through. For layer 2 on this armor, I'm adding the exact same color, but I'm adding a lot less water this time around. I'm still using my 1 inch mop brush, but by adding less water, the opacity of this layer is considerably higher. Also notice I'm not covering the entire surface with one layer of paint. I'm selectively choosing areas to add the paint, but then I'm rotating the brush and feathering the pigment out to give it a blotchy look. This is going to show how the paint on this armor has weathered over the years. To desaturate the green on the armor, I'm going to create a wash using Liquitex Burnt Umber and Red Oxide. A ton of water is applied to this mixture and it's brushed over the entire surface. And just like before, once the armor had been covered, I could then go in with a damp paper towel and remove some of the wash. A hairdryer can once again be used to lock this layer into place. This same wash is also applied to the back, and I forgot to mention, but notice how I hold the armor at an angle. This will help the wash pool in recessed areas. Liquitex Raw Umber and Mars Black are gonna be mixed together, and this pigment is gonna be applied to all the faux leather straps. Now I'm not adding as much water here as I did for my previous washes, and that's because this paint is going to seep down into all those details and tint the surface of the foam. To simulate some rust, I'm going to use the super glue and baking soda technique that I'd used on my Sandman helmet. The super glue is applied to the surface in selective areas using a toothpick. Once I was satisfied with where it was on the surface, I could then take some baking soda and drop it on top. This will immediately activate the super glue and then I could brush off any excess powder. Now I know there are a lot of different rust techniques out there, but I like this one because it's very tough. If you were to use the iron powder method, you have to make sure to seal it really well because a lot of that will flake off. Also, I know some people use cinnamon or paprika, but I just don't think it bonds near as well as the baking soda. Just like battle damage, this is a process that you could definitely overdo on the piece. So be mindful of where you're placing the rust and really think about why would rust be building up in these particular areas. Liquitex Red Oxide is now going to be dry brushed onto the leather using a filbert number 12. Now I'm not adding any water to this paint because I want to make sure that all those dark recessed areas stay visible. Using the same red oxide and a detail brush, this paint is applied to all of my fake rust spots. Now one thing that's great is this super glue combination takes the paint really well, 
but it also has a really unique crystallized structure, so the texture of the rust definitely stands out from the rest of the armor. After the red oxide had been applied to all the rust areas, I could then go in with a very dry filbert brush and feather the pigment out. This will make it look as though the rust is really oxidizing the paint in these areas. Now at this point I really want to start to think about the direction of the weathering, and how the rust would flow down the armor. So from a lot of these heavy rust areas, I'm going to simulate a drip effect using my detail brush. Now this is the kind of process that takes quite a while, but I'm really happy with how it's looking so far. A wash of Liquitex Raw Sienna is now applied to the entire surface. The reason this paint is applied after I add the red oxide to the rust is that not only will this wash tint the armor, but it'll also help tint those rust sections. Again notice that I'm keeping the armor at an angle so that the wash directionally pools. The same wash is also applied to the back panel. Now with minimal water and a detail brush, I can start to apply the Liquitex Raw Sienna directly to the rust spots. This is a highlight process, so I don't want to cover all the red oxide that I'd already laid down. I'm selectively picking the highest spots and adding the paint to those. And while I'm adding the paint, I'm still thinking about directional weathering and where the most amount of rust would build up. After the first layer had cured, I can now start to add a second layer. This time I'm adding no water to the Raw Sienna at all. This will make sure that the pigment count stays high and the paint will be a lot more vibrant. The thing that really helps this section is I can follow exactly where a lot of the paints had pooled earlier. Painting the back of the armor, I'm still thinking about directional flows and how the rust would streak. For the star on the chest, I drew it on and then laid down some masking tape. Liquitex parchment is going to be applied with a 1 inch mop brush, making sure not to use any water. By rotating the brush, it's going to help simulate that paint weathered look. I then switched over to a filbert brush so I could add thicker paint in certain spots. The masking tape could then be removed, revealing a pretty weathered star. Now to help with the weathering process, I add some water to the star, and then I can scrub that away using a damp paper towel. This is going to help simulate that chipped paint look. Some of the raw sienna wash can then be applied on top of the star to the rust areas to show its age. Liquitex Turner's Yellow and Raw Sienna are then mixed together to act as a rust highlight. This is going to be applied very selectively to the rust, showcasing some oxidation. One great resource on Google is looking up farm equipment and how it's weathered over time. And here you can see through all those layers, it's really having a good directional pull on that rust. This same process is also applied to the back, making sure to address those really deep recesses. Now I can start painting the buckles using some Liquitex Neutral Gray and Mars Black. This is going to cover up all the primer and act as a really good base. This same paint is also applied to the faux rivets on the straps. To seal the pores in the foam and give it a little more sheen, I'm going to be adding some graphite powder. This is applied with a paper towel and then buffed to give it a good shine. Liquitex Iridescent Rich Silver is then applied to all the buckles and rivets. Being an iridescent, it doesn't completely cover the graphite powder. It actually helps enhance it and locks the powder in without having to seal it. Another dry brush of the raw sienna is applied to all the leather straps, primarily along the perimeter. It can also be applied to the buckles and the rivets, but make sure not to add any water so it just hits the highlights of the piece. Before I move on to the next layer, I'm going to clear coat all of the armor with some Krylon Flat Crystal Clear. 
This is going to lock all my paints in so I can do some final weathering without having to worry about ruining the paint that I'd already applied. As some final weathering magic, I'm going to be using some Dirty Down sprays. These sprays are new to the US and will be available through Goblin's Hut at the end of January. I'll have a link down in the description as well as my affiliate code. I'm going to start with some mid brown and you can see here how it tints the surface. Now what's really cool about these sprays is that they are water soluble, so I'm going to use my brushes and some paper towels to really give this a weathered look. So here you can see I'm adding water using my mop brush but holding the arm at an angle to simulate the drips. Then I can go in with my paper towel and remove more or less spray until I get my desired look. Now when you first start playing with these sprays I would highly recommend to test them on some pieces first. That way you can kind of see how much water you need for weathering and removal. I did end up spraying a little bit onto the buckles and the leather as well. Now with this line of sprays, there are lots of different colors to choose from. So I'm going to add a little bit of the rust color to the sections that had the most wear. And just like the mid-brown, I could then go in with some water and remove some of the color. Another thing I thought was really cool is that I could put water at the top and bang the armor on my table to simulate the drips falling down. Now just like any of the other detail process, this is something you could definitely overdo. Weathering a piece is an art form and I highly recommend to look at real world references online. So you all can see the steps that I took to paint foam to make it look like rusty, weathered, post-apocalyptic metal. And hopefully you can take some of these tips and tricks and utilize them in your own future builds. Now, if you are building any of my builds or using some HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD Foam.